ിൽ <laughs> the old port of musris was completely destroyed and kochi was formed so kochi means small lagoon and that shortened to kochi there is plenty to explore in kochi you won't be disappointed when you come to fort kochi this place i think it is better than goa the vibes here the food here the culture here it's really amazing but now it's time for breakfast let's get some good breakfast come let's go So this is our breakfast stop Achuvetanda Kada it is a small shop a small cart which is very close to the sea you can see the huge crowd behind me there are locals there are fishermen there are tourists and there are couples who come here to have breakfast also i have heard that many celebrities many film stars come here for breakfast and they give a variety of things so what we have opted for is a ulli vada this is onion vada a a patri this is patri which is made of uh, rice and coconut a typical muslim dish and a duck egg curry and this resembles a puttu a steamed rice cake but uh, this is called mani puttu so this is something like a noodles which is in a cylindrical form quite exciting food there is also mutton chops you get fish fry you get fish curry you can choose anything you want let me just taste this ulli vada this ulli vada or uh, the onion vada is like donut it is deep fried so of course lot of calories so breakfast it is wow super crunchy and super tasty just have a look at this let me take little bit of that gravy you can see lot of green chilies in it lot of garlic this is a typical tattukada style tattukada means the shops on the road side daba style hmm very different from what i have tasted earlier the egg roast the gravy is really good let me have one more bite so this is my bite i have kept couple of garlic on top hmm this not too spicy it is bursting with flavors and there are variety of things you can have with this gravy the duck egg curry let me also taste this patri you can see it is like a round vada shape but uh, this is made of rice vada is made of dal and i think there is little bit of coconut inside this patri hmm this is a perfect bite and it's amazing this is what people have for breakfast in fort kochi let me scoop up that gravy and have one more bite hmm they had the normal eggs and duck egg i have chosen a duck egg so let's have a bite of this egg i wanted to show you inside of this egg the duck eggs are little orangeish in the center unlike the normal eggs which are yellowish so this is another combination they a little more of that vada i really like this vada you can see the curry leaves there i like the crunchiness of the vada with this little spicy mildly spicy gravy i want to savor this vada the onion vada with this gravy 
and little bit of egg so you can see I'm going to take a piece of egg white and the vada and little bit of the gravy mm. so day one in Fort Cochin we are starting our day with this amazing breakfast from Achuvetnakada if you come to Fort Cochin if you are a local or if you are visiting I strongly recommend coming to this shop early in the morning maybe at 7 o'clock or 7 30 all these dishes are ready and taste few of the items there they are very friendly and they are only happy to give you a little more than what you have asked so now let's try the Maniputu so you can see the Maniputu it's like noodles so it's noodles in a cylindrical shape so let me just mix it with a little bit of the gravy little bit of that egg that is a decent bite so let's taste it mm. I'm a great fan of putu because it is steamed and there is no oil and it kind of soaks up all this gravy all the goodness of the gravy and it becomes an amazing bite when you mix it with any gravy putu is a great combination with any of the gravies whether it's vegetarian or non-vegetarian it kind of soaks up all the goodness of the gravy and this is just a steamed thing there is only rice and little bit of salt and coconut but the gravy has got all the goodness so mixing both this and taking a bite straight away drives you to heaven mm. Mm. so after this breakfast I'm going to have a black tea they have a milk tea and a black tea I'm lactose intolerant so I prefer a black tea so let's have a sip Wow perfect this is the perfect breakfast a good meal to start the day with so I'm just finishing up the tea our total bill, Stalin who is behind the camera and my breakfast it costed us just 120 rupees. It's less than two dollars and it's an amazing breakfast. We are in Vasco de Gama Square in Fort Cochin. Right behind me you can see the fishing nets but interestingly there is a board here. It tells you what all things you can see in Fort Cochin including the Emmanuel Fort. Fort Cochin was named Fort Cochin because of Emmanuel Fort. Now only remains of the fort are there. The fort was completely destroyed which was constructed I think in the early 16th century. Around 1503 by the Portuguese. Then the Dutch took over and then they handed over the fort to the British. Now only remains of the fort are there but a group of people, archaeologists are excavating the remains of the fort which is really encouraging. Behind me you can see the remains of Emmanuel Fort. This was the first Portuguese fort in Asia. But of course what remains is just the part of gunnery here. There are plenty of things which are getting excavated but right now if you want to see Fort Emmanuel you can only see this canyon and there is a boat there. So while walking on this beach road I saw Parameshwaran Chetan. Chetan means elder brother. He makes this uh, oars made of different kinds of wood. Normally he sells it to the fishermen. He says one will cost about 1000 rupees. But just see how beautiful this is. So he has got about six of them and he brings it from a little far away place called Chertala and he sells it. So if you find him, probably you can get one and display this on your living room wall. This is a nice curio and this will be a good memory of Fort Cochin. It's lunch time and we have come to Fort Paragon. This is very strategically and centrally located just opposite to St. Francis Church and Parade Ground. 
Paragon is a big brand based in Kogikot or Calicut. They have about 20 branches all across India and of course Dubai. They are known for their biryani. So we are going to go inside Fort Paragon, see the place. This is a new place which just opened about a month back and then order a few dishes and taste it. So let's go. Come. So finally our lunch is here, a fairly large spread, so we have a prawn dish, this is called uh, the Paragon Special Shrimp, this is a 40 count shrimp which is uh, marinated in spices and of course coconut milk, it has been beautifully garnished, just have a look at this dish, this is a beauty. Another signature dish of Fort Paragon is the fish mango curry. So, we have the kingfish which is naming in Malayalam in a gravy, in a beautiful red gravy. The fish mango curry is of course served in a mean chutney. This is a terracotta pot in which the fish is cooked. The fish is served with appam and then there is chicken biryani. Normally the koi kodin style biryani which Paragon is famous for is made with a short grain fragrant kaima rice. So this biryani is made of kaima rice. This is a chicken biryani. And along with the biryani, there is a dry chutney, a, another chutney made of date palm which is I think slightly sweet and sour and of course a raita and a couple of papads are there. So we will start with the prawns. So you can see this uh, medium sized prawn which is kind of coated with the thick coconutty gravy, curry leaves, few green chilies but we are not going to get the green chilies into our mouth. I'm going to remove the head of the prawn, but you have a lot of the head fat. So let me just take a bite of that. Mm. I can taste the sea. This is fresh prawns and it's extremely flavorful. You can see the size of the prawns and the gravy which is coating it. Let's take a bite. Mm. The rich coconut milk, the mild spices, I can see the mustard seeds, the green chilies and the curry leaves. This prawns is for everyone. You will love it. We are going to taste the fish mango curry right in front of me. Along with the fish mango curry, we are going to eat appam. These are hoppers. You can see these beautiful appams. This is traditional Kerala breakfast or it's eaten for lunch along with the curry. So let me keep the appam here and then scoop a little bit of the gravy and fish. The fish I told you is uh, a kingfish or naimin in Malayalam. You can see the consistency of the gravy. You can see the green chilies, tomato, onions, garlic, all kinds of spices right out there. Let me just take a small piece of fish and the gravy. I'm going to scoop it right on top of this appam. You can also see the mango pieces, mango slices in this curry. 
this is the souring agent of this curry i quite like this uh, mango fish curry or fish mango curry because mango is only available during a certain season take a small piece of this appam that's my piece of appam let me just take a small piece of the fish and the gravy you can see how rich is the gravy it is really thick so this is my bite the piece of fish the gravy and the appam mm it's creamy because of the coconut milk very mildly spicy but uh, the highlight is that fish itself the freshness of the fish you can see the piece of the fish i'm going to taste it as it is mm and the appam is soaking all the goodness of the gravy i'm going to take a piece of this appam all the curry leaves and even this mango piece hmm this is a must try dish if you come to fort paragon i finished one appam and that fish mango curry but uh, before going to the next dish which is biryani i want to taste one more prawn the prawn was really good i'm going to taste the prawns with this curry leaves and green chili hmm the first taste you get is of the gravy coconut rich gravy which is enveloping the prawns then comes the taste the bite of the prawns the prawns are cooked just right there is still a bite and then the taste of the prawns the taste of the sea here in fort paragon apart from this biryani they are masters of seafood we are just sitting 100 meters away from the sea and i'm really enjoying this meal so now we are going to taste the specialty of uh, paragon hotel we are in fort paragon in fort kochi but we are not going to miss this biryani they are known for their biryani and the paragon biryani is rated the 11th best biryani in the world this happened quite recently and they're quite proud to announce that people who have tasted biryani from paragon will vouch for the quality of biryani so let me take the biryani so the biryani is garnished with a little bit of that coriander and uh, the fried onions let's spoon little bit of that biryani into the plate you can see the green cardamom already there little bit of that masala i'll just take a small piece of chicken the piece of chicken is quite large and you can see the masala here let me scoop little bit of that masala on top of the chicken so this is the biryani which we are going to have let me keep this aside along with the biryani you have little bit of that chutney this is a coconut chutney little bit of the date chutney and of course the raita so let's take a bite of this biryani so the biryani rice which is used in koi kodan biryani is the kaima rice kaima rice is a short grain fragrant rice this very different from basmati lot of people like kaima rice lot of people don't like i like both the rices the long grain as well as the short grain rice as long as it is biryani so let me dig into this biryani it has been waiting for quite a while and we have been shooting for about 15 20 minutes let me take a small scoop of the rice and i'm going to taste the rice as it is that's little bit of biryani wow this is very different from the biryanis elsewhere in india we have tasted the lucknow biryani we have tasted the hyderabadi biryani the kolkata biryani the kundapur biryani and biryani from tamil nadu but here in kerala we have different kinds of biryani but particularly one in kolkata talasheri and kannur the biryani is very flavorful the flavor comes from the spices and of course little bit of the dry fruits which they add into the rice and the rice itself i told you it is kaima rice it's quite nice it let's take little bit of the chutney and taste the chutney itself wow that is coconut 
the Madras onions and the green chilli. Just three or four components and this works well with this rice. Let me mix it with the rice and take a bite. Mm. Another accompaniment with this biryani is the date chutney. Let's taste the date chutney a little bit. Mm. The date chutney is sweet, it's a little bit sour and uh, it's very different from the other chutneys. There is no heat in this, it's not spicy at all. Probably you won't expect that sweetness which is coming from this date chutney. But it works well with this Kodi Kodan Biryani. Mm. Let's taste the chicken now. Let's break this chicken. It's perfectly cooked. You can see the chicken. It's kind of coated in the thick nice masala. Let's take a bite of this chicken and the rice. That's my bite. The chicken and this fragrant rice. Here in Fort Paragon, everything is in perfect harmony. The ingredients they use, the proportions which they are using and of course the passion for cooking. Everything is top class. This biryani, the prawn and the fish curry, they are absolutely good. I wish I could uh, taste more dishes. It's evening 5.30 and it's it's time for tea or coffee. So Stalin is having a coffee. I'm going to have a traditional tea. And uh, there are a couple of bites here. So there is a chicken samosa and a chicken cutlet. I can taste plenty of onions. So that sweetness of onion is that there is also chicken mince. And it's fried. A very simple snack along with the tea. You can have a bite of a cutlet or two. I also have a chicken samosa. This samosa is different from the samosa we get in Delhi. Uh, one, it's stuffed with chicken, but the pastry is so thin and it crackles. So let me take a bite of this also. I'm going to chase it with a sip of tea, hot tea. Wow. The tea is milky, it is sweet but piping hot. Perfect. We are in Casa Kitchen in Fort Kochi. Our dinner is going to be here. Casa Kitchen serves really Nadan food. Nadan means desi. This is what the locals eat. This place is hugely popular. It started I think about four years back before the Covid. But uh, now they kind of bounce back and there are plenty of Nardin dishes you can try. So you can see this huge array of food in front of me. So we have a seafood platter which has got a nice grilled fish. This is airy fish. I don't know what you call airy fish in English. I'll just put it down here. There are also some special prawns, a decent sized prawn. This is squid, squid in thick masala. Here you can have Virinyam chicken. Virinyam is a harbour near Trivandrum, the capital city of Kerala. And uh, this is kind of fried chicken with a lot of those masala also coated over the chicken. This is chicken paratu, again a chicken dish with very thick spicy masala. You can see plenty of curry leaves and green chilli here. Here we have beef fry. Beef is not a restricted meat in Kerala so if you come to Kerala you can try beef. 
I don't mind trying the beef because it is a super tasty protein. And here we have small shrimps. This is called Chemin Uli Malagum. Uli is Madras onion, small onions, and Malagum means green chili. So a spicy dish served in beautiful mortar. Just see how beautiful it is served. This is a mortar made of some stone, probably granite. You have this banana leaf and then you have the dish inside. You can see chunks of beef which are nicely fried with plenty of coconut flavors on it. So let's start tasting. So along with this we have idiopum, spring hoppers and coconut milk. So let's take a idiopum. I'm just going to drizzle a little bit of that uh, coconut milk over it. That will make it moist. Let's start with the chicken paratu. So let me take little bit of the chicken paratu. You can see the gravy. It is kind of thick. This is the gravy. You can see red chilies, curry leaves and also green chilies. This is going to be real spicy. So a piece of spring hopper. You can see how soft it is. Almost like noodles. This is made of rice and just salt and it's steamed. So let me first taste the masala. That is a nice bite. The masala is quite balanced, little spicy. The chicken is on the bone, so let me take a little bit of that meat. Mmm, a great combo with idiapam, that little bit of coconut milk, and this chicken paratu, it really works. Mmm. I want to try this Virginium chicken now and then we'll go to the seafood. So Virginium chicken, oh god, this is a huge, a complete leg piece. You can see the size of this chicken leg piece. Very crispy. You can see those crumbs right out here, the masala crumbs. Mm. This is not too spicy, but beautifully fried, you can beat the KFC chicken. This is Naden Virginium chicken. I want to try the fried masala of this Vietnam chicken. Yeah. Stalin, if you can come closer. You can see this fried bits here. I am going to take this fried crumbs along with this onion. This is the speciality of Vietnam chicken. So let me mix it with this idiapum. Hmm. So we have the fish platter in front of us. There is a nice grill of fried fish in front of us. This is airy fish and you have prawns and then you have squid which is called kundal in Malayalam. So let me take a piece of this airy fish. A nice fleshy piece. You can see how it's coming off the bone. You can see the white flesh which is very flaky and fairly soft. Airy is known for the soft meat. So let's taste the airy fish. This fish is not at all spicy. I quite like it. Let me take one more pinch of this fish. Now from the tail side, squeeze a little bit of lemon into it. And let's taste this. With the lemon, this fish tastes really divine. Nicely grilled fish. And now we'll taste the prawn. You can see the size of the prawn. Fairly large prawns. Let me take a bite. You can taste the freshness of the prawns. And whenever I eat prawns, it kind of reminds me of the sea. There is a bite to the prawns. It is a little spicy. And if I mix it with this gravy, I'll get some more spiciness. Mm. That is quite a mouthful and I'm really enjoying these prawns. So you can see the squid here. Again, squid is in this thick masala. You can see the rings of squid. Normally the squid tends to be a little rubbery when you cook it. Let's see whether this squid is good. There's a little bit of bite, but it's quite tender. It is soft. And this masala is very different from the masala which is there with the prawns. Quite interesting.
So this is tuku parota. So it came in a container that is called tuku, and they just open it and they just put it in this plate. This is a manchetti made of clay, and we are going to taste this tuku parota in this. So there is parota and pieces of beef which are nicely coated. It's like mixed in the pan and then they put in this stainless steel container and they empty it in front of you. So by the time it is served, the paratha really kind of soaks up all the goodness of the meat. So it is hot now, it was just entered. You can see pieces of paratha. This reminds me of kotu paratha but uh, these are chunky pieces. It is not kotu, it is finely chopped. So let's taste the paratha on its own. The paratha has become really soft. It has soaked up all the goodness, that masala, that flavor of, of the beef. So the beef chunks are here. Let me also take a slice of coconut, maybe a little bit of green chili and that curry leaf. All the goodness of tuku paratha is here. Let me take a bite, I can't wait. Mm. But I'm really loving this coconut slices in this tuku parata. Mm. Really good. I'm going to taste a biryani. This was not in our list. We have eaten so much and there is still plenty of food left. But uh, they have insisted that I try this biryani. This is special and they open it only in the evening. This is called the Atara biryani. Atara means dinner. So let's take a little bit of biryani. I'm not going to eat everything, just a spoonful of this. And also there is an egg, which I really like. Let me take a piece of egg. You can see the egg right here. And you can see the piece of chicken. This is a leg piece, this is a drumstick, which is kind of huge. I'm not going to taste the leg piece, but I'll taste this little bit of biryani for you. I always say biryani is the ultimate port to rice. This is the perfect rice dish. So I'm going to taste it with a little bit of egg. There is a date chutney and a little bit of that salad. So I will take a little bit of the salad here. Along with the egg, we'll take a little bit of onion and tomatoes. Mix it with a little bit of rice. So that is my bite. Biryani, Atara biryani. Mm. The biryani is very mild, quite rounded flavor and all, even kids can eat it. That is a specialty. You can see they have used a long grain rice here. Not very spicy, no masala at all. I mean, there is that masala you can see, it is not dark colored and it's different from the biryani we tasted in the afternoon. And this biryani is the night specialty of Kasa Kitchen because it is called Atar Biryani. Mm. This biryani truly deserves as a dish. You can kind of wind up this dinner, this beautiful dinner in Kasa Kitchen. Today was day one in Fort Kuchin. We had an amazing day right from the breakfast. Breakfast we had from Achivartan's Kada, which is a street shop. We really enjoyed the breakfast there and it was very pocket friendly. Then we had a nice biryani in Fort Paragon. Fort Paragon is a recently opened restaurant. It opened about a month back and it's a big brand in Koi Kod and in other places. We enjoyed the ambience and the hospitality there. In the evening we had a tea and, and a samosa and a chicken cutlet which I wanted to try when I was planning my trip to Fort Cochin. So this was a day with plenty of dishes. I hope you have liked this video with amazing food. If you have liked it, give it a thumbs up to this video. And don't forget to subscribe to Chomping Champion. Please share the video with your friends and family. Till the next video, stay fit and stay safe. Bye.